Just because God made you, just because God saved you, just because is all the reason that I need. That's what Grandma told me, and in my life she showed me. Grandma loved me just because. My Grandma was God's gift for Grandma. Even though I did things wrong, I knew she still loved me. There'll never be a day that I don't think of her. For she told me why God loved me, and she told me why she cared. Just because God made you, just because God saved you, just because is all. Reason that I need. That's what Grandma told me, and in my life she showed me. Grandma loved me just because. She said God sent His only Son into the world to live the life I could not live. He died and rose again. Loves me just
Good morning. Good morning. Nice to see everybody so bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. That hour went somewhere, I don't know where, but uh, a delight to be with you in the Lord's house. A few things to highlight this morning. Next weekend is very busy. It's going to be a great weekend, and you won't have to cook much either. All right. Friday night's the auction. Doors open at 5 o'clock. There's a meal served at that. Um, Sunday is firefighter pancake breakfast, so you have breakfast. Sunday night, the Garms family will be here uh, performing. Uh, there's a meal before that as well. Doors open at 5. I think the meal starts then. Um, we're looking for salads and bars. If you can bring those Sunday morning, that would be fine. Uh, Andrea will be here. She's the one leading this from uh, St. John's uh, at 3. So if you can't bring them in the morning and want to bring them by at 3, that would be greatly appreciated. The concert itself starts at 6.30. Um, oh, and then Wednesday, we got another meal between the church services. See, we're just going to feed you all week. Uh, churches at 4 and 6, the meal in between. Uh, tater tot hot dish, a wonderful Minnesota tradition. Uh, please join us uh, for that. I don't know if I, I think that's everything I wanted to, to get out there. Saturday, you might have to cook, sorry. Um, uh, but before we begin, uh, Pastor Hintz is going to be doing Bible class this morning, uh, and he'd like to take a few moments and just give you an idea of what it's going to be about and the importance of you being there today. So. All right, fourth Sunday in Lent, Easter's in three weeks. Uh, we're quickly approaching that wonderful celebration in the church here. Uh, today, our order of service will be divine service setting three, and our first hymn will be 425, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, 425. Blessings to all of you this day as we worship.
We continue with our confession and absolution, page 184, and up on the screens. Let us stand together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, and in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Continue as we sing together the intro. It. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. The Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord be with you. And with our spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, your mercies are new every morning. And though we deserve only punishment, you receive us as your children and provide for all our needs of body and soul. Grant that we may heartily acknowledge your merciful goodness, give thanks for all your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday in Lent is from Numbers chapter 21. From Mount Hor they set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we loathe this worthless food. Then the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Epistle reading from Ephesians chapter 2. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand together for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory be to thee, o Jesus said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For anyone who does wicked, wicked things hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. We confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. Be seated for our next hymn, 571. God loved the world so that he gave 571.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, how are you doing? How are you doing out there in the world? As things change and as we experience different situations, how are you doing? Those overwhelming times of trial and, and terror and, and crisis... How's it going? Good question. How are we doing? How do we respond to those events that happen out there in, in the world? Those times of trial and terror, despair and, and crisis. Was it in fear or was it in faith? Right? Did you fear, love and trust God above all things? Like it says in the meaning of the first commandment, or, or did it seem that the situation you faced was just, just too much? It's good to look back and, and to reflect how we're doing. We, we can learn from it. We, we, can, we can grow from it. Those trials and those struggles, those, those crises, all those are there to prepare us. They're there to prepare us for the biggest trial we will ever face death. How'd you do? Do you compare yourself with others? Do you take a good look at yourself? Do you, do you have those honest answers? How are you doing? How was Israel doing? That Old Testament reading, right? Not too good, right? They'd been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years years 40 years they had many times of overwhelming trial and terror and despair and and crisis 40 years because of one event hopefully our trials and crisis and situations don't last us 40 years but for 40 years they had failed they had failed that trial that God had set before them. They didn't fear, love, and trust God above all things. Right? Remember? 40 years earlier, God was getting ready to take them into the promised land, and they're like, oh no, those people are too big. Those people are too strong. We could never overcome them. Really? Never mind what God had done for them Earlier, right, the ten plagues, dividing the Red Sea, destroying Pharaoh's army, rescuing them from 400 years of slavery in Egypt. Right? But no, we can't go in there. Those people are different. Those people are big. Those people are strong. So God gave him some time to learn. Some time to grow 40 years in the wilderness 40 years while he kept them while he watched over them while he provided for them despite everything right? even though they grumbled a lot they always had food they always had water and their clothes never wore out the soles of their shoes never wore out for 40 years. Well, those 40 years had passed, and now they're getting ready to go back and to take the promised land. And no surprise, what are they doing again? Grumbling. So what does God do? He sends a small trial to prepare them for the big test that they will face. Although it probably didn't seem to them at the time a small trial, right? fiery serpents among them if they were bitten they would die but God provided a way out God provided a way out for them that if they would just look to him they would live and they did they looked to faith that bronze serpent up on a pole right that Moses had prayed to God for the people to, to save them. And he did. 
And it was so. All he wanted them to do was to look to him in all their trials and tribulations and despair and crisis. All he wants is when faced with an enemy, no matter how big, no matter how strong, when filled with doubt, when filled with fear, don't rebel, don't grumble, turn to God, turn to him, believe his words, believe his promises, and they would live, and, and it was so. Well, the same is exactly true for us when we're faced with those fiery serpents, right? Those times of trial and terror and despair and crisis, when we're filled with doubt, when we're filled with fear, we too have something to look to and to believe, something to remind us of the words and promises of God. And, and not only that, but to show us, to show us that those words and those promises have been fulfilled. It's not a bronze serpent on a pole, but it's God's Son on the cross. And, and not just for Israel, but for the world. We heard that, right? For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Right? Right? John goes on to say that Jesus did not come to condemn us in our weaknesses, not to condemn us with our doubts and our fears, but he came to save us. He came to give us the assurance that we need, to give us the confidence that, that we need each and every day amidst everything that's going on, that no matter how big, no matter how bad the trials are, the troubles are, the the persecutions are, we have what saves us from it all. The Son of God who in death defeated death. The Son of God who rose to life to give us life. A gift that, like Israel, we do not deserve, but a gift that He gives to us in His love. Not because we're so lovable, but because he is so loving. You were once dead in your trespasses and sins. That's what St. Paul tells us today. right? You were dead. You were dead when you were following the world. You were dead when you were disobedient. You were dead when you were carrying out the desires of your mind and your flesh. And all there should have been is wrath from God. That's when the rich mercy and the great love of God shone forth most brightly when he sent his son. What else could that be called but the greatest measure gift of all time? Right? Before we did anything, before we cleaned ourselves up, before we turned back, before we did better, before we did anything because... Truthfully, we're not able to do anything. God acted. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. Right? It's a gift of God. A gift sent some 2,000 years ago, but a gift still here for you. A gift for you to turn to at all times, time and time and time again. In the big trials, in the little trials, when despair and crisis come your way, when you doubt God's care, remember your baptism. Because that's where God gave you the gift of being his son and his daughter. That's where God made you his own. He will provide. And when your doubts and despair and unbelief seem too much, hear again His word. Hear again those beautiful words, your sins are forgiven. He takes it all away and directs our eyes in faith. 
to the cross again. That nothing you do, nothing you can do will be bigger than that. And when your weakness and your fears seem overwhelming, come here to his supper. Here where he feeds you. Our own manna in this wilderness to strengthen us with his forgiveness, to strengthen us with his life, to give us the health of the soul that we need. Such rich mercy and great love here for us. The immeasurable riches of his grace. Which out there in the world considers the church in all sorts of different ways. But she needs to be true to herself. For only the church has and can provide what you really need. The life that you need. The gifts that Jesus has right here for you. The gifts that we so desperately need. The gifts that the world so desperately needs. And then when we've received those gifts, to walk in them, Paul tells us. right? To do those good works that God has prepared for us to do. It simply means to give to others the rich mercy and great love that we ourselves have already received. What will that look like for you? What will that be for you? It just depends on your callings in life. But one thing, one thing I think for all of us during times of trial and terror and despair and crisis is to show people how to live without fear. To look to the cross. That as big and as bad as those times may be, we have one who is greater. The one who rescues us. We're in the hands. His hands. The hands of the one who is rich in mercy. And great of love. Now that doesn't mean throwing caution to the wind and doing whatever you want. It means knowing that whatever comes... We're good. Whatever comes our way in this life, we're safe. Safe in the hands of our Savior. It means that not what we think or do or what the government tells us is the ultimate truth and be all and end all. It's Christ and His Word. It means having a confidence that what God says and promises, He will do. And so we can live in confidence. We can live in that faith. No matter the trials and the terrors and the despairs and the crises that come through our lives. At times it may expose a, a weakness in our faith. It may expose a lack of faith of many people in this world. If we... If you see that, repent. Turn again to the cross. Look and live. He bids you to come, to receive that forgiveness, to, to receive that strength, to be strengthened for the battle out there and encourage others to come, to look to the cross and live and be prepared for the battles to come. So when the biggest one of all does come, when you are faced with that time of your death, you'll be ready. You will already be looking to the cross in faith and full confidence that he who did it for you, he who promises life will provide. A wonderful thing we have to look again to the cross. To fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And to know that the Lord is my light and my salvation. 
nothing to fear. The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Nothing to be afraid of. The Lord is with me. The Lord will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. The Lord will conceal you under his tent. He will lift you high upon the rock. He already has. And he will continue. For he is rich in mercy. And his love is great. Not just for the world, but for you. Look to him. Hear him. Receive him. Look to the cross and live. Amen. The peace of God, the peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing the offertory. be seated as we gather our offerings to the Lord. Let us stand together as we continue with the prayer of the church. O Lord God, draw us into your light 
expose wherever we, like your people of old, have thought, spoken, and acted against you, that in repentance we might look to your Son lifted up on the cross and be saved from your righteous wrath. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, you have set Joseph, our president, and Timothy, our governor, as authorities over us for our good. Bless and sustain them with all they need to govern us, that we might be ruled wisely and in accord with your will. Lord, in your mercy. O oh God, you are our light and our salvation. Hide in your shelter all who suffer in mind, body, and soul. Keep them in their day of trouble from falling into faithless fear and uphold them with your peace in Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for calling Donna Kufal to the knowledge of your son, keeping her in the true faith, granting her a blessed end. We implore you, help us by your Holy Spirit rightly to know and repent of our sins and to be strengthened in our faith that in all things we may grow up in him who is our head, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Lord, you have made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Cause your spirit to be at work in us, that we may not carry out our sinful desires of our bodies and minds, but be your workmanship in Christ Jesus, walking in the good works he has prepared for us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant to your church your Holy Spirit and the wisdom that comes down from above, that your word may not be bound but have free course and be preached to the joy and edifying of Christ's holy people, so that in steadfast faith we may serve you and in the confession of your name abide unto the end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Be seated for our closing hymn, 543. What wondrous love is this, 543.
Sunday. I apologize for that. Please join us uh, before Bible class on Sunday school for some fellowship and some donuts. Thank you.